welcome to today's Two to You. I'm Angie, the lead keeper here at Children's Zoo. We're gonna do some training and painting here with Fiametta, our red panda. Um, just so you guys know, I'm gonna keep my mask down because I use a training whistle with her. This whistle is what we call a bridge, which is basically what we use in uh, clicker training or positive reinforcement training. Um, this is in place of a clicker. So if she does the behavior I ask her to do, I make a noise with the whistle and that tells her she did that behavior and she's going to get a reward. So we're gonna see if she's interested in coming over and participating in some training and we'll see if we can get her to do some painting, which she really enjoys and is really good at. See ya. Come on, see ya. Do I have a paintbrush or do you have a paintbrush? Where do I put the paintbrush? Got it. Come on, see ya, target. Gimli is going to be very helpful. Come on. See ya, target. Good girl. So target is a very basic behavior. We use it um, to move them around where we need to. And when she touches her nose to the end of this pole, uh, that's her target. So I can use this pole to shift her wherever I need to do. Target. No, don't grab. Target. Thank you. Gimli, this is not for you today. All right. I'm gonna knock my water over. All right, so we're gonna get situated here. See ya. Let's see the paint. See ya. See you, Meta. Come on, Target. So this training is all um, positive reinforcement and we want them to participate. So it's voluntary on their part. So if they don't want to train, we don't force them to. See ya. Gimli, you're not helping, Baba. Go see Deborah. Yeah, go see Deborah. Thank you. Good girl. Target. Good. See a take. See a take. See a take. Good. Paint. Good girl. Good girl. See ya. So we usually separate these guys for training, um, but since we're trying to do a session out on exhibit, it's a little different. So we're having Gimli out here. Deborah, you can just stand up and pull them away. Um, so they're not as used to this combo training session, so it's a little distracting for them. See ya! And you can see, even though he's much too big for it, Thea still tries to mother Gimli a little bit and try to scruff him. So when they're babies, it's natural for them to carry them by the scruff. Um, but Gimli doesn't appreciate it as much now that he's bigger. And now they're going to play. <laughs> These guys are still quite playful. Um, they're very playful when they're young, so it's normal for Gimli to play a lot. And Thea reciprocates very well. See ya! See ya, Target! Come on! See ya, come on, target. I'm gonna do a lap around first. Good girl, come on, target. Good girl. Good. Ready? See ya, take. See ya, take. Paint. Well, that was a very short one. See a take. See ya. Come on. See ya, Meta. Come here. Take. Take. 
So the take behavior I ask is actually a very natural behavior for her. Um, these guys will grip bamboo. They actually have a false thumb to help them hold it. So when I ask her to take, she's gripping the paintbrush just like she would bamboo. They just, of course, want to go, both go to the same place at the same time. See ya! Hi, Jamie. I'm trying to switch them off. Alright. Good practice for both of them to do this. See ya! Come here. Can I Good! Paint. That was a dot. I'll take it. Here, take. Good girl. Paint. Very good. Yes. Thank you. Can I have some more paint? Yep. Good girl. See a take? Good. Paint. Good. That's not right though. Good girl. Yes. Good. Thank you. Very nice. So the paint we use is non-toxic. So it doesn't matter if it gets a little bit on her or accidentally gets on something. It won't hurt her. And we do things like this for enrichment. So enrichment is anything we can do to break up their day a little bit and make things more interesting for them. Um, it helps elicit natural behaviors, and like I said, that gripping behavior is a natural behavior for her. So, it's entertaining for them as well as us. Hi, are you helping? So it looks like we got a question. Are these foxes? So mm. these guys <laughs> are red pandas. They are not related to foxes. Give me one second and I'll come back to that. Here, take. Paint. Hold on, you're off your boat. Here, take. Here, paint. Thank you, that was a nice one. Yes. So these guys' closest relatives are actually raccoons and skunks. Um, but they're not even that close. They're a distant relative, so these guys are in a family all on their own. Deborah, sorry. Um, so they don't have any really close relatives. They do look a little bit like foxes, but you can see the resemblance to raccoons. I know, Fia. You're a good girl. Fia, take. Take. Good. Paint. Good. And where do they live in the wild? Yes. Okay, Christina, so can you turn on the roof fan? They are from uh, China, India, and Nepal region. From both sides of the Himalayas, there's actually two different subspecies of red pandas. Actually, recent scientific research can has decided they are two different species. And we're can you turn on the roof fan? Sophia here is a okay. Fulgens, and the other subspecies is a little bit larger. They're just from two different sides of the Himalayan mountains, um, and they are Refulgens or Cyani, depending on which scientific articles you look at. You ready? 
So we switch off which group comes out on exhibit here. Thea and Gimli come out um, every other day with our other two refulging females. Thea. Thea, come here. I know everyone over there now. Thea Meta. Hmm. Hmm. I lost it. I know you're still sleeping. Hold it. Another question, what is their routine Good. in the wild? Do they roam a large area? Do they live in packs or by themselves? Do they give? So these guys are naturally solitary in the wild. <laughs> so she's trying to scruff Gimli again. That'll probably lead to play. Um, unless they're in a family group of a mom with cubs. So these guys, they can have up to three uh, more than that's not usual, and singletons are occasional. They'll often have twins. Um, so you may see a mom with young cubs. The cubs will stay with them until they're about a year old um, or a little less. And then they'll kind of disperse on their own. So these guys um, will actually wean around six to nine months of age. And what do they eat? So these guys eat a variety of grasses and sometimes fruits, occasional insects and small mammals, and a lot of leaves. Bamboo is actually an obligatory part of their diet. See a target. All right, I'm gonna call it done with the painting. We'll see if we can get her over for a few more targets. So the you may notice they share a name with the giant panda, and that is strictly only because um, they both eat bamboo. So these guys will eat the bamboo leaves while the giant pandas will eat the whole stalk of bamboo. Target. Target. Good. So here these guys get a variety of produce. They get apples in their diet every day. They get grapes as a training tree and they get bamboo every day. And their bamboo is essentially free choice, so they'll get as much as they want to eat in a day. I know, you're very impatient and very good. See if I can fix this, there we go. Target? I was not ready, I'm sorry. Target? No selling it. Thank you. Good girl. And the grapes are actually just a special training treat. So they're one of their favorite foods. Much like us, these guys have a sweet tooth. Um, so they like sweet things and grapes are higher in sugar. So because of that, we just make sure they get a small amount on a daily basis um, because we don't want them having too much sugar. See a target. I know you can do it too. Target. See ya. Wanna come back over? Target. Good. Good girl here. Yeah. Here. Good girl. All done. So I'm going to end her session there only because I want to end it on a good note for her and she was starting to lose interest. Um, so I want to keep her ending on a positive note. She did the behavior I asked for. She wasn't um, frustrated by it. So we're just going to go ahead and stop and let her do her thing. But I can continue to answer questions. Um, so all the behaviors we do with her are actually based towards husbandry. Most of her behaviors are medical based. So she knows how to do voluntary injections. Basically, she comes up and targets and gets treats and she doesn't even really notice she'll get a stick from the vet tech um, in her right hip she gets vaccinations just as you would your dog or cat yearly so she'll get a distemper and a rabies vaccination every year and she just does that with us going in with her uh, we also do ultrasound training with her so we're able to monitor her pregnancies Gimli is her second cub here at Zoo New England um, so we're able to monitor both her pregnancies throughout with ultrasounds and that's all through this voluntary training so the painting's a little bit more of a 
more kind of fun one for us, but again, it does get her to elicit those natural behaviors by holding and gripping. Um, and because of that, it was actually fairly easy for her to train. She enjoys doing it. She knows when she sees the paintbrush and stuff come out, she's ready for it. So it's actually a really um, fun exercise for her. And you guys can see they're playing over there again. So they do love to play. And because Gimli's quite young, he'll still play a lot with her. Um, our other two pandas do play as well. They're still fairly young. They're about two years old now. Um, so they still play a lot as well with each other. Fia probably wouldn't play as much um, if she was on her own or with another adult, but she does play really well with Gimli together. And that's um, eliciting a lot of those natural behaviors as well. So you can see it's pretty common for them to stand up on their hind legs as they did while we were training. And one of their main defenses is something called a quack snort. And they'll actually stand on their hind legs and pounce and make kind of a quacking snorting noise. And that's um, kind of what they do when they're frustrated or upset and they kind of want to go on the attack. So they have very, very sharp claws that they use um, as defense as well as to climb. These guys spend a lot of time in the trees in the wild and they love sitting up here um, as well. So they'll spend a lot of their time sleeping up on the platforms up here. And that's just a natural behavior for them. They do eat bamboo a lot, so they'll kind of climb and get those bamboo shoots. Do they live for? Um, 10 to 12, I believe, uh, is pretty kind of getting towards the mid teens is considered pretty old for these guys. So, Fia here is four now, um, and Gimli just turned one. And we also had a question what is the function of their fur coloring in the wild? So, it just helps them blend in with uh, their environment. They're in the trees a lot, um, so that coloring will kind of help them blend in up there. Um, and the dark underside will blend in when they're up high as well. So that's what that acts as. So while it stands out pretty well in all this green and a lot of brown, it would not. And they do have individual variations. They all have that red coloring, um, but you get some pandas that have a little bit more kind of like a blonde color to their face or tail, or actually even some white on their face. And that's just individual characteristics as well. The other subspecies um, tends to be a little bit darker overall in coloration, so they're just their reds a little bit darker and they have more dark on their face. Um, our two girls are actually opposites. One of them is a very typical for her subspecies and the other one's very light. These two are pretty average for their species. You can see they love rolling around and playing a lot and they're pretty cute together. We'll take a look at her painting. So again, it's all voluntary. We only do it if she wants to participate. Um, we don't want to force her to do any training she doesn't want to do, but she seems to enjoy doing the behaviors here. Gets a little messy, but this paint's all water-based, so it'll wash off pretty quickly. <laughs> and again, like we don't want them to train if they're not interested, so I just want to keep it as long as she's interested in working with us. Yeah, do you have any other questions? So these guys, they are considered endangered um, because mainly due to habitat fragmentation. So there's actually not as many places for red pandas to come in contact with other red pandas. Um, so it's habitat loss as well as habitat fragmentation. Um, and these guys also are hunted some for their coats um, as well as the pet trade over in Asia. And they do not make good pets. They have exceedingly sharp nails um, and they don't really like human interaction. So Fia is trained to let us touch her so we can do those injections and do body condition scoring. Um, but she doesn't actually like being touched or interacting with us. So uh, we work our best to kind of help maintain the species with this breeding program we're a part of. Um, we're part of the species survival plan with the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, and that's how we got Gimli. Um, so with that, we'll work with other zoos to maintain a species, uh, a genetically diverse uh, captive group of red pandas. So we'll end with one last question. Mm -hmm. Why did you want to work with animals? Well, that's a great question. <laughs> I have pretty much always wanted to work with animals since I was very young. I may not have known what that was right away, but I did 4-H as a kid. I had a lot of pets as a child. I started as soon as I could get a job. I worked in vet offices, barns, 
all sorts of things. Um, I just loved animals from a very young age. Uh, this field itself is very competitive. Um, a lot of us work really hard to get to where we are. Most of us have bachelor's degrees in some type of related field and do several unpaid internships before getting a job. Uh, but for those of us who do it, it's totally worth it and I would do it a million times over. Um, so when I started, I wanted to be a vet because that's what I knew worked with animals and then I realized I liked the hands-on interaction much more than the medical aspects. Um, so yeah, I started pretty young with animals and I realized pretty quickly I wanted to work with wild animals and from then on I kind of came to the conclusion of being a zookeeper and that's what I work towards. So if anyone's interested, get as much experience with any animals that you can um, as early and as often as you can. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks guys.